Come on. Whoa. Arrow. Hey, hey. Arrow, come. Come on. Hi, I'm Allegra. I am a master dog trainer and dog body language expert. So today in this video, we cover, good boy, wait, how to do a calm unload, how to help a dog regulate, how to start a walk calmly for success, how to pass strangers, and how to set your dog up for off-leash success. So right now I have Arrow on a long line. My goal is to have him off leash by the end of the hike. We also cover how to use trail objects as uh -uh challenges and impulse inhibition for the dog. So Arrow is a dog that I picked up in Mexico last March who has been living with my friend in Austin for the past six months. I haven't seen him for a while and when we were in Mexico, I had someone film the two weeks that we spent together. So two weeks to train is what a dog trainer does when she adopts a dog. So everything that you need to know for your new dog, honestly, everything that you need to know for having a great life with your old one. It's really fun to watch Arrow transform from street dog to gentleman in those two weeks. Click the link below, go to my website, check out Arrow's course, Two Week to Trained, and you'll see why he is a little movie star. If you're liking this video and finding value, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm giving away everything I know about dog training. So come walk with me and Arrow. We're having a really nice day. So we're gonna unload Arrow from the car. Whenever you go on a hike or a walk or an adventure, taking your dog anywhere, how you unload from the car is gonna set the tone for the whole outing. So this is really important to me that we make it calm because it's one of the most exciting moments. So we have a chance to amp our dog up, to just kind of let them be what they are or to help them regulate to a state where we can work with them. So Arrow is waiting. The first thing that I always do is just check the door. His nose, I can see through the window, is still back. He's not pushing at the door. If he was trying to push into it, that's pushy. And so I would close the door just to say, hey, it's not a given that this thing's gonna open. Here, he kind of went to smell, which is fine, but then he pulled back. So it's not just about what the dog is doing, but the energy they're doing it with. So here, I wanna be sure that I'm able to grab the leash and he got frustrated, so he went to the other side of the car. That's perfect. This is a great behavior to reward. So here, I'm gonna use my hand to block as I grab the leash. And then I'm gonna do a touch on the leash. Uh -uh. And here, the stop sign of my hand, I'm tensing my abs and I'm kind of staying out of his way. He could launch out. Uh -uh. So here, with the uh -uh command, good boy, I'm letting him know, uh -uh. don't do that. Also, don't whine. So here I'm going to say wait, and I'm going to take another step back. There, the lick is stress release. This is hard. Uh -uh. It's good for me to ask my dog to do something hard. So I'm always going to correct whining. It is pushy, impulsive, rude, overexcited. I want a dog to learn to, I want a dog to learn to manage their emotions. So we have another dog coming. So I'm going to do a light touch on the leash just because I noticed before him and I'm saying, Hey, keep your focus on me. So this is really light. I'm taking a leash with no tension at all and I'm just creating tension. It's about an ounce, you know, it's the same as if I did a little touch with my fingertip. So here, I'm gonna do my stop sign. I'm uh, 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 and that's okay. That's normal that he expects uh, uh, when you move, I move, because that's what I want on a walk. Uh, uh. <sighs> the next thing I'm gonna do is take a breath and down-regulate myself. So I hold my legs like this, I kind of, go into a relaxed posture because I don't want to only be tense to get him to stay. I want to live a relaxed life. So, ah, I relax and you stay because I told you to. Uh -uh. I know, buddy. Ah, so here I'm going to relax and hopefully lead him to a slightly more relaxed state. And then that's the state that I want to reward. So bank this time into your walk and that yawn stress release, it's a good thing. 
he is learning to manage his stress if he's getting to the point where he can release it. And this is one where it's like, choose your hard. So either he can be stressed now, figuring out how to exercise self-control, or he can be stressed because he's overstimulated, good boy, in the environment. So I'm gonna reward the sit he down-regulated on his own without me telling him to sit. And this is important. You can give your dog a command and you can cheat and put them in the right position. Ah, ah, ah. Or you can give them a chance to do it on their own. Ah, ah. So here it's tough because I'm rewarding the sit ah, 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 arrow, but I'm trying to not reward the whining. Hey, stop. Ah, ah. Stop. So here, him looking away, him licking his lips, ah, 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 arrow, him laying down. These are all ways of him saying, this is really hard. And I know it's really hard and I'm here with him, but I'm not fixing it for him. So here we have a quiet dog laying down. I want him to land here. Arrow, good boy. So immediately I picked my little bullseye and I'm asking him to stay in the bullseye. So little touches with the leash. This is close enough, it's fine. The concept of having a bullseye is so when your dog jumps out, you don't go on autopilot and think, my dog is out, my job is done. When my dog gets out, I want to give him a job. I want him to stand and wait. I want him to be close to me so he's not off wandering around, but not right up on me. So if I move, I'm gonna step on him. And here, without tension on the leash, he's holding himself in place. He's using his nose and his head to smell the environment. He doesn't need to go stick his nose in it. But I've given him a job. Again, he's exercising self-control and I can do what I need to do around the car. So this is nice when your dog isn't dragging you the second they get out of the car. They can wait politely. It's a really good thing for them. Okay, so we're, good boy. So a shake is stress release, I can reward it. Um, so we're ready to start our walk. I'm going to get an on the job energy and posture. Um, I like my dog to start behind me. I do a couple little squeezes on the leash and already I'm asking him to walk in a heel. I don't like for them to drop their noses to smell. Trust me that your dog can smell really, really well. He doesn't need to rub his nose on anything to smell. They can smell, you know, what's his face? A little over a foot off the ground. It's not a huge difference. So I don't think Arrow has been on the Greenbelt Trail since he came to Austin. So this is a literally really exciting situation. Um, and he is doing amazing. He's doing so good. If you notice, I'm walking a little bit slow. This is my dog training pace. I like to have a nice little lumber. And I always tell my clients, I'm from New York. This is not the pace I walk. This is how I walk when I'm training dogs. So here, when a dog um, wants to go potty, I always give them some room. So I like to hold the leash on just one finger because I train my dogs not to pull. And I'll stand nearby and stick my arm out. Uh, whenever I stick my arm out, it immediately lengthens the leash. So after your dog has gotten a couple good peas and you're pretty sure that their bladder is, you know, empty for functional purposes, the rest of the peas I call luxury peas. And you don't necessarily have to let your dog pee everywhere they want to. It's not a requirement. So when I'm asking Arrow for a heel, and this is something a lot of people ask about, um, just because so many dogs pull, uh, I, I use the Mendota slip lead, but I always tell owners, you can really hurt your dog's neck if you don't use this leash properly. Um, a lot of people feel bad having it so high on the neck but your dog is actually more likely to pull more if it's any lower on the neck. Like everyone who walks their dog on a collar knows that the dog is really comfortable pulling on that. So I like it really high. I think about this, like, you know, a parking lot with huge speed bumps, you slow down. You go really slow over those speed bumps. 
So this is the same thing. It's at a really sensitive place on his neck. And if he were to pull, it's going to be uncomfortable for him. Now, my job, my sacred responsibility here in using this piece of equipment is that I need to train my hand to have no tension. If there's tension, it has to be his fault, not because I was spacing out and I was holding the leash with tension on it. Uh uh, Arrow. He's anxious to go on his walk. So I like for my dog to start behind me. I do a pinch on the leash and I fan my fingers out. You can hold the leash like this. You have to hold it with, I say, thumbs up to Allegra's leash technique. I'm gonna start with my arm behind me, but my hip forward. So shoulders twisted, hip forwards. So you get a nice stretch. And I'm gonna say, let's go. So is my sound for pay attention. And then here you'll see me do little taps on the leash. This is really cool because Arrow's never been to this trail before. I don't think he's ever really been to a trail except for when we went to the river in Mexico. And um, his owner doesn't use this leash with him, but I did when I had him for those two weeks in Mexico. So he knows how to walk in a heel on it. And I'm really able to keep my fingers fanned. And you'll notice whenever he pulls, I will close my fingers. And I'll say, hey, that's one of the things you gotta be careful about not doing. When I give my dog the job of not pulling, they have to be considerate to me. They have to be aware of where I am and how long the leash is and whether or not they're gonna be going so far that they create tension because whenever they create tension, I'm gonna do squeeze, squeeze of tension back. My corrections only last a fraction of a second. I do it at the pressure volume that will be effective. I don't you know, pull on them really hard because that would be a massive overreaction to the little pulls he's doing. So I only use as much pressure as they're using. And my dog is exercising self-control because there's a consequence. If he doesn't exercise self-control and he pulls on me, he knows that I'm gonna squeeze, squeeze on the leash and it's not gonna feel amazing. Doesn't hurt but it doesn't feel great. So there, little kiss kiss sound to get his nose up and then a little touch on the leash. So before I use physical touch to correct, I'm always gonna try something else first. And this is a place where I think a lot of owners are just talking to their dogs so much that it's hard for the dog to parcel out subtle communications. So I really like using sounds. Is a pay attention sound? Is a pay attention sound? Uh -uh means that seems like a bad idea. And, uh -uh. and there you got a reaction from him is my holy crap, you're doing something really bad sound. And it's important to have that sound because sometimes our dogs are doing something really, really bad and we need for them to do exactly what he did which is go, oh shit, <laughs> that's a bad sound. It's not my favorite sound to make, but it comes in really handy. So here, Arrow's doing super amazing. I will say he's usually a leash puller. So it has to do with what I'm asking of him. And it also has to do a little bit with the equipment. We're passing someone, so we're gonna go to the side. So here, little squeeze, squeeze. When I see any kind of distraction coming, I'm going to assume an on the job posture. I'm gonna puff out my chest a little bit, lengthen and broaden my torso. And I just have a, okay, I'm handling this energy. So when I see a distraction coming, change my posture and my energy a little bit. I'm going to do a touch touch on the leash, just barely taking the pressure out to let my dog know, hey, I see something. Here's my plan on how to handle it. Um, and then I'm gonna make a plan. <laughs> so really quickly, I need to 
assess the situation and say, okay, the people are gonna pass on my left. I'm gonna put him to the right. I'm gonna lengthen my arm a little bit to keep him on the right side. So even if he were to uh, dart to the left, you know, he wouldn't have very far he could go. So I make a quick plan and then I act out my plan. Honestly, having that plan in place gives me so much calm and confidence and it makes it really easy for both of us instead of what a lot of owners do is go into a situation, suck in, their body language becomes like a question mark, which is not the message I want to be sending to my dog. They go, oh no, what's going to happen? And then the dog is like, oh no, what is going to happen? And, um, you know, then the dog is kind of on their own in that situation, just having to figure it out because the owner didn't make a plan. I love that when I stop, Arrow stops on a loose leash. He's not bombing around. Like sometimes when owners stop, when they wanna talk like I'm doing, when they're going to pick up a poo, the dog is like, free time. And he'll just kind of be wandering around, pulling the owner, wanting to smell, doing his own thing. Other times in order to get a dog to stand still, the owner has to literally hold them. I'm gonna say this is most dogs that I see. So again, I make a bullseye for Arrow, and when he goes to step out of it, I just do a little squeeze, squeeze, release. I always want to default to this release because I want my dog to hold himself. So this is how we create a dog with impulse inhibition. So now I'm going to shift my energy. I'm going to kind of let it flow. Little kiss, little touch. So here we have a person coming. Same plan as last time. Shorten up the leash, guide him to the side. Hey there. So you notice how my hand just floats above him to the right? This is something else you'll see in the e-course. When I was in Mexico, I taught Arrow to wait whenever there's difficult landscape. So it's really easy for him now to wait behind me. If you watch the video from Mexico, it was a lot harder for him to figure out how to be patient and let me figure it out first. Dogs have four legs and their balance is a lot better than ours. So I don't mind asking my dog to wait because he can stand somewhere difficult for me to stand way easier. So if you'll notice, my fingers are out. The leash looks like the letter J. I always want to see slack in it to the point where it dips low into the letter J. If you're holding the leash like that, yeah, there might be slack in it, but it's too hard for me to tell. I like things to be real obvious. So there we go. That's the default and perfect for arrow. I walk, he walks. And if you'll notice, I'm just floating my hand next to him. He's a good boy. So the idea is you want your dog to float next to you. You want to float next to your dog. This does mean that out of my peripheral vision, I'm always keeping an eye on him. Now, a lot of owners will stare at their dog when they walk. That's not a good idea. I need to be aware of the whole environment. I need to see if a distraction's coming. I need to be watching where I'm going. And I want my dog to feel like he's having to manage himself. If I'm physically staring at my dog, rightfully so, my dog will think, oh, cool, Allegra's on top of the whole me and her thing. That means I can look around. Whereas I want the opposite. I want my dog to know that it's his job to stay on top of the whole me and him thing. And I'm the one who looks around. If your dog isn't trained to be off leash, they're not safe off leash. Um, I've had the experience of having a dog run off before. It is terrifying. It's the worst feeling in the world. Where we started the trail, we're down from a highway. The green belt is 12 miles. So if he ran off chasing something and then ran off further and then didn't know where to find me, panicked and went the wrong way, that would be really bad. So... For me, I like to make sure that my dog is tuned into me and I have control over him. And then we'll go through a series of exercises where I get the dog ready to be off leash. But in the beginning of every hike, especially with a dog that 
I don't work with all the time. I need to start the hike on leash. So this becomes the default. Yes, we're in nature. Yes, we're out somewhere exciting. We're in the park, but your go-to spot is gonna be right next to me with calm energy. If when I get to the trail, I just let my dog bomb off, um, then that becomes the default. I really don't want that. So here, Arrow's getting a little bit more excited. This is something I can do. So this move is a little bit complicated, but if my dog is pulling ahead, I stop, give him some room, squeeze back, guide him to the side. I want him to take a few extra steps back, and then all of a sudden he's in a heel again. So this is a great move for correcting your dog without uh, having to haul them back. Because once they get far enough ahead, I don't have leverage anymore. This is where I like my dog with their ear or their nose in line with my thigh. And I taught him well, so he just got right back into position. And honestly, it's now November and I had this dog in Mexico in March. So the fact that he remembers so much when his owner uses different equipment, has a different training style, the fact that he's just good boy, snapping back to being so good, tells me that dog training is handler specific. It is not about the dog. It's not about what they know. It's not about what they're capable of. Um, I walked Arrow a little bit on Sunday and he was pulling on me. So I had to have a conversation with him and I was like, dude, you can't pull on me, but they're always going to try, good boy. And I don't blame him for trying, but I'm just going to really calmly insist that he doesn't pull on me. And then he's like, you know what? Don't pull on Allegra. So dogs can definitely learn to not do things with certain people. It's not about what the dog knows. It's about what the people insist on and what they allow. So we're gonna go up a little further. We're gonna check out the pool, looks pretty low, and then we'll start doing our off-leash prep. So here we are in what is usually the creek, which is flowing. There's two waterfalls that come down in this spot. Totally dry right now. I have some treats. Eric doesn't usually get treats, so he's gonna be very excited. Um, we're gonna do some on-leash recall. So this is super important. We're gonna walk off together. I'm gonna wait for Arrow to get a little bit distracted. Arrow, come, 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 good boy. So he's gonna get just a little, good boy. Now he knows I've got the treats. Come, come, good boy. I'll see if I can get him distracted again. Arrow, come, come, <laughs> good boy. So I like to start on one leash. Um, I could have started doing this on the way down, but I always have a long line. I don't have a long line today, but I have an additional six foot leash, which puts us at 10 feet. The long line that I like to use is 15, so good enough for me. These slip leads are great for threading together. So now I've got 10 feet. Arrow, come, come. Good boy, good boy. So already, I'm not gonna do a treat every single time. He's gonna get a little scratch that time. Now here on the long line, I'm gonna have the same rule. Don't make tension on the leash. So there, he got up in front of me. It's totally fine. He's not a bad dog. I'm not a bad trainer. It's just what happens. So when he hit the end of the leash, I asked him to come back to me. So here, uh, 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 we're gonna try something hard. This is a great opportunity to challenge your dog and practice self-control, impulse inhibition. So I'm gonna try going up, having Arrow wait down here. Ah, ah, pulse, pulse, and that's okay. He's used to going when I go, so this is different. When I do the wait command, I do a stop sign. I'm gonna tense my abs. I wanna have brick wall energy. I'm gonna do a backwards touch. And that's okay, I'm explaining something brand new to him. So he's not in trouble, I'm just asking him to come back down. Such a good exercise. There's so many moments to build your communication and practice impulse inhibition to challenge your dog and teach them something new. Communication, good communication, it doesn't mean that it always goes perfectly. 
It just means that you can stay calm and figure it out. So same thing with our dogs. When I'm trying to communicate something difficult or new, so much of it is just about staying calm and explaining clearly. When you find a natural obstacle on the trail, make the most of it. Use it to desensitize your dog, use it to build their confidence, your communication. I love doing up, up. Ready, Arrow? Up, up. Good boy, good boy. Look at this brave weight. So I got one cute shot, but no need to push it. He went back up for me when I asked. He didn't go as far as I would have liked for the perfect photo, but that's a place where I need to say, okay, he was compliant, even though he was kind of done with the up up. Um, and that's okay. As long as I get a, a turn of willingness, you know what I mean? Like just show me you're willing to do what I ask. We don't have to go through with it to like my dream situation. If you're willing, I want to reward that. found in my relationships that I'll often be nervous about something and I'll say, hey, like, is it okay if we don't stay the whole weekend or, you know, and once I find out that I have permission to get out of it, I'm much more willing to do it. So I think taking a sign of willingness from someone and someone showing willingness to me i'm just like okay as long as you're willing to be considerate of me like i'm gonna go along and do my best to do your thing hey there Hi. i didn't hear anything you'll notice that no one has said hi to arrow i like to tell my clients no dog has ever starved to death from lack of pets um a dog doesn't need to be pet by strangers on a hike. In fact, it can make the distraction of strangers too exciting and too rewarding. And then every time my dog sees a stranger, he sees a potential reward. I don't want that. So I like to indicate with my body language no need to say hi, we're kind of doing our own thing and it's actually better for him. Not greeting strangers is also really important for off-leash skills. If every time I'm on leash and my dog sees a stranger, they go up to them when I can control it. When there's no leash on and I can't control it, my dog's ahead of me, a stranger comes onto the trail, what's to stop my dog from bombing up to them? And I'm not close enough to influence him. Not every person wants to be greeted. No one on the trail today has indicated that they wanted to be greeted. So not letting your dog greet strangers is a really important off-leash skill that you have to build on leash. Put him back on leash and just walk by people. If they ask to greet, say, oh no, we're in training. And just don't let your dog greet anyone for a little while. Also getting your dog ready for the distraction to come, like I was showing you earlier, putting them on the opposite side that the stranger is coming and just walking on by. You can tell people a lot with your body language about whether or not you're open to them interacting with your dog. So you don't actually have to say anything. Arrow, come, come. Arrow, come, come. So that was a good moment because instead of coming back to me, Arrow hesitated. He wanted to keep smelling the smell he was smelling. So I did a little touch, touch. That's the first time I've had to do a correction. It was just a touch, touch on the leash to say, come means now. Come doesn't mean come when you're done. This is a life-saving distinction. So here he's pulling to the end of the leash. He's got a little bit more freedom. He's getting a little bit more excited. So if it isn't working to stay on a loose leash on the long line, I'm touching the shorter leash now. We're gonna get back into a heel mindset and then I'll give him back a little bit of freedom. The reason that my dogs progress so quickly and are safe off leash is because I'm so strict about the steps. I'm so strict about it. So I'm really looking at the nuances. Like, did you hesitate before you came to me? And like, hey, are you pulling a little bit on the long line? And if you're not using your freedom well, 
you lose a little bit of freedom, but that's okay because you'll get it back. And when you get it back, you'll really know how to manage it in a way that feels safe. Now here he's doing a luxury pee. I don't mind as long as he walks on before the leash gets tense. So if he's able to get up in front of me, smell a tree, get in a little pee, and then before he gets so far behind that he's gonna pull on the leash, he comes along, I don't mind at all. Arrow, come, 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 good boy. So the way that I say come, that high pitch excited tone, that's a reward. I try to make the way back to me exciting. I do that by moving backwards. So now he kind of chopped my fingers a little bit on the last bite. Now I have the treat pinched between my fingers and I'm gonna want him to nibble it out. So I don't want him to do the big chomp. I'm gonna reposition my leash a little bit higher on his neck. Some dogs have slippy necks and they slide down and that's okay, you just have to reposition it a little bit more. I can fit two fingers in. It's clearly not choking him. And the idea is to barely use it. So you'll notice he hasn't been choking. So Arrow is ready to drag the long line. Um, I'm gonna start out the way I always start out, in a heel. Doing tricks is a great way to get your dog's brain online. So there, I'm gonna get him back on the correct side. Deep breath for me. So because the leash is dragging, it's gonna feel a little bit different. Arrow, come, come. Good boy. This dog is very food motivated, but that is like the level of enthusiasm you want on your cum. Good boy. So when he pauses to look for me, I'm gonna mark it with a reward. That was a little overexcited. Ah, good boy. Relax myself, make him wait. I'm gonna wait, uh -uh. good, until both his paws were on the ground. One of them was up. Easy boy. Good boy. Ah, uh -uh. arrow, come. So there he moved on for me a little fast. I want my dog to have the experience of me rubbing around their collar and them staying free. So it's important that my dog doesn't dart off like that because if I need to grab him, I can't have him in the habit of darting away. I need for him to come, have me touch his neck and then be free and then 5% of the time, I'm gonna be grabbing him, but 95% of the time, it's just a little scratch. <sighs> so here, I'm gonna undo the second leash because he's being awesome and he's a little bit too far anyway for me to be able to grab him. Uh -uh. So I'm gonna put him back where he moved from. <sighs> Relax, arrow sit. Good boy. As a reward, he gets to smell my hand with the treat scent. It's not the best reward, but they can't all be treats. Deep breath. It's easy to get tense, especially the first time your dog's off leash, but do those body scans. Arrow, come, come. Whoa. Arrow, ah, ah, ah. Arrow, ah, ah, ah. Arrow, ha. Arrow, come. So here, that was a little bit too excited for me. I know that to most people that looks like a dog having fun, but to me that looks like a dog that's a little bit out of control. So we're just gonna go back on leash for a minute. It's no big deal, but I show him what energy gets to keep the leash off and what energy gets the leash put back on. Boy, uh-uh, arrow, come. Good job, good job. I need for them to come off it. We're passing another dog on leash. I'll put my dog on leash. I can tell pretty quickly when I see an owner's body language, how they feel about passing a dog and her energy was very business-like. I could tell she was kind of preparing for some kind of reaction from her dog. So always best to have your dog under control. I guess it would have gone badly if he had ran up on that dog. 
Which it's fair because technically the green belt is on leash. I need my dog in their thinking brain. I can't have a little excited, happy ball of energy. And most people love when their dog gets like that and they say, oh, he's having fun. But what I see is a dangerous situation. If he were to run into another dog, he's gonna be more likely to jump all over them and he could get bitten. Let's see if we can get another up, up. Ready, buddy? You go up, 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 good boy. Good job, good job, good boy. You're beautiful. So what I do is I tuck the leash handle into the tight part of the slip leash. I can tell pretty quickly when I see an owner's body language how they feel about passing a dog and her energy was very business-like. I could tell she was kind of preparing for some kind of reaction from her dog. So always best to have your dog on under control. I guess it would have gone badly if he had ran up on that dog. Which it's fair because technically the green belt is on leash. So to me, totally worth it. Don't be ashamed if you're off leash and you pick up the leash again. For me, this is how I train a dog. You're on, you're off. You're on, you're off. They always try the other side after I block them, so I know to expect that. <clears throat> Deep breath. Now that he's locked in as a reward, I want to release some of the pressure. Uh -uh. And I want him to know, okay, you can go a little further. Um, he might stay locked in for a little while and then figure out it's okay to explore. I can also take a step back and release the heel position. And everyone needs to remember, this is pretty much his first time off leash. If you check out my two weeks to train course, he was dragging the long line on the beach, but I never wrapped the leash like this before. So it's pretty dope for a first time and for a dog that I haven't really worked with since March. So in addition to my hand signals that say wait or go ahead, I'm combining that with my body language and my inner state. So when I say go ahead, I'm releasing my lower pelvis muscles, I'm relaxed. So I'm saying with my body, it's okay, man, it's all chill. When I'm doing the heel, I have a tight core, my body language is tight, and I wanna be saying, I have a job for you. I'm focused, I need this from you. Um, he's pooping. <laughs> so it's a different energy. So now that he's kind of learning his job, a little bit of pressure, the release of pressure is the reward. So when there's two handlers for one dog, decide who's the main dog boss for that day. If you say come and the dog comes to either of you, it's fine. That person pets the dog as a reward. I don't always need the dog to come to me, but sometimes it can be a fun test to take turns calling the dog. Ah, uh ah, -uh, arrow. It can be a good exercise to have the dog come to both of you to practice, but if you're not playing that game, whoever your dog comes to is fine. So I don't want Arrow to bomb off here, but I want him to know I'm releasing the tight heel. And isn't it cool? This dog has never done this before. He learned to heel walking next to me on leash, but we've never done off leash. We've never done an off leash heel. We're building on our on leash skills and having it translate to the off-leash scenario because all this stuff come we drilled in the house and on the long line respect always I always ask him to respect me and to listen fully exactly when I give a command heal right we practiced recall we practiced so this isn't anything new but the environment is new and getting to wander a bit more. Arrow, good boy. So I used his name there as a light correction for going off the trail. I didn't say come, so I'm not mad he didn't come to me, but I am gonna try it now. Arrow, come, come. Arrow, come, 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 good boy. Yes, yes, yes. Good boy. Ah, 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 
arrow, come, come, come. So there he bombed off, a, uh, uh, arrow, come, arrow, hey, come. He, uh, uh, arrow, come, come. So he bombed off a little fast. That's okay, but we're just gonna do as many redos as it takes for me to get to a place where I can scratch his neck. If your dog does that fraction of a second check-in, you're setting yourself up to have a dangerous situation on your hands if you ever do need to grab your dog because they're not used to being around you and being reached for unless you're grabbing them so they know it's coming. So that's why not every single time, but as much of the time as I can, especially when my dog wants to check in then bomb away, I'm saying, uh-oh, guess what you just won yourself? We're gonna do recall until you get it right. So that's okay. So there I wanna reward him for waiting. He's learning not to get out of my sight. And this is so cool because this is all stuff that owners really struggle with. And this is stuff that sets dogs up to have really bad habits off leash. But here we are in his first session, teaching him the off leash heel, making sure his come command is tight teaching him to stay within visual distance, rewarding him for when he waits. Ah, ah, arrow, hey, arrow, come, arrow, come, ah, 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 arrow, come, hey, ah, ah, arrow, 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 come, arrow, hey, come on, come on, whoa, arrow, hey, 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 arrow, come, Arrow, ah, 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 arrow, arrow, come, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come, 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 come here, come here. Cool. So that is like the nightmare, right? Arrow was a little bit ahead of me while I was bragging about him. He saw something off the trail. I think that he kicked a rock over and then got excited and tried to chase it. Thank God this was not a cliff, but it is pretty steep. He ran down. I kept calling him back to me as you saw. And then he tried to jump up, but he couldn't. And while he was trying to jump up, he knocked some more rocks down. So he went and chased them. I kept calling him with a harsher tone as long as he was moving away from me. When he started moving closer to me, I changed my tone to the high pitched come reward tone and then he ran up to me like a good boy so that's an example of when their instincts kick in and they go out of their thinking mind um, this happens it happens sometimes and this is why you need your recall on lock um, it's also important not to panic so you can keep thinking clearly and remember, as long as they're moving away from you, you need to do a harsher come, like a correction to let them know moving away is a bad idea. I don't like it. And then when they're moving closer to you, you want to be using that reward tone to draw them in. You'll notice Arrow isn't in trouble because the last thing that he did was come back to me and let me grab him. So I rewarded him with a treat for the come it's too late i can't correct him because the thing i would have been correcting for happened down at the bottom of the really steep hill so this is almost like a little correction for me of hey he got a little bit too far ahead now that could have gone differently he could have kept chasing and ran off and we would have been out here for hours looking for him so that's always a risk and that's why i am so diligent about all of my off-leash rules so no big deal, he had an amazing day. We're gonna just be careful of that and maybe towards the end, I won't give him as much freedom or I'll keep the long line on. But it was still a super, super off leash day for Arrow and we will be staying on leash the rest of this hike. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming on a hike with us. Arrow did amazing and I am so glad that he didn't run away and we would still be chasing him around the green belt. So I hope that you got a lot out of this. This is how you set a dog up for success. And even with the best laid plans, something can still go wrong. 
so that's why we work so hard to have a dog that is great off leash so that when something does go wrong, we have a plan in place, we know what to do.